guys, it's Rumi the Math Person, and today I'll be going over integration by parts. So, integration by parts is super helpful when there's two functions put together. Let's say like f of x and a derivative of g of x. dx, integration in terms of x. Then, it's really easy for us to split them up and integrate them by parts. Huh, so interesting, right? Wow, I wonder where the mathematician got their names from. And idea is you want to set something equal to u, and you want to set something equal to the derivative of v. So let's say, for example, for this problem, we can just say that u is equal to f of x, and dv is equal to the, um, the derivative of g of x. Then, you want to find du, and you also want to find v. So du would be your derivative of f of x, which would just be f prime of x, and v would just be the antiderivative of um, this one. Which would just be, oops, I don't know what, what I just clicked. Did I just click this one? It would just be g of x, right? Then what you want to do is you want to multiply across, across and take the uh, integral of this um, the v and the du. So idea is this: you want to find uv minus the integration of v du. Or in this, in our example, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like f of x, g of x, minus the integration of g of x, f prime of x. And hopefully, the, by the time you take the first um, IBP, this term becomes easier to solve. It becomes a coefficient or something like that. So you don't have to keep doing it over and over. But sometimes you do. But let's just save that for some other time, right? And the biggest question I get when I'm... Um, going over IVP is what to set for you, what to set for V. So you have to meet Mr. Lie eight, Mr. Lie eight. So this stands for logs, which is like you know natural log or you know just log, or I, which is your inverse, like you know like tan inverse like that, or you know arc cosine, or algebra, which is just like your x squared, or it'll be like three x fourth, or T, which is your trick, you know, that's just like tan, sine, or E, exponential. You, and that's just pretty simple, E, X, or 1 over E to negative X, something like that. Well, when you pick your U, you want to go down the list like this. And you're probably like, wait, why? Why would you do that? Well, the thing is, like, imagine this, like, it's super easy to take the derivative of exponential, but it's super hard to take the, um, I mean, it's super easy to take the antiderivative of an exponential because it will just stay the same. But it's super hard to take the antiderivative of, for example, let's say like an inverse trig. So the idea is that if you pick going down this list, it makes your life so much easier. Like, for example, if you have like x squared ex, you also, you always want to set, you go down the list. Okay, the first, we have an algebra and exponential. So when you go down the list, the first thing you're going to hit is that algebra. So you want to set the u is equal to x squared, and you want to set the dv equal to ex. And you just want to go from there. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, actually, let's just, might as well just do this problem, right? Then our du is going to equal the derivative of x squared, which is just negative 2 x. V is just our x, um, antiderivative of ex, which we know is just ex. So now we just multiply across minus the integral across this way. Alright, alright, let's just dive right in. So that's going to be x squared e to the x minus the integral of 2x e to the x. And you then you have to take the integral of this, but you notice something. You're probably like, wait a minute, that's also two functions put together. Oh no. Yeah, that sometimes that's going to happen. That means you just have to do it one more time. So again, we're going to set u equals 2x, du is just going to be that coefficient 2, dv is ex, v is just ex. Again, we're going to multiply across minus the integration across this way. So that's going to be equal to, we're going to rewrite this part. Again, don't forget that minus sign. And this is going to be equal to 2x ex minus 2 ex. Alright, alright, all right. and don't forget this is integration. Okay, okay, we can totally take the integration of 2ex. It's just 2ex. Do you see why we put that antiderivative or the dv to be that ex? 
Yeah, I know, I know. Now that's 2x ex, and again we have to distribute that negative sign, so that's plus 2ex. And again, because this is um not bounded, we have to add that plus c constant, and that's it. This is your final answer. Okay, so let me bring it back to um probably the exam p questions. So for those questions, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of integration of x ex dx. Actually, let me do a negative x because this makes more sense, right? Because if we're doing, for example, probability questions, exponential has the negative sign in it, and this would be like an expectation of an ex uh, exponential function distribution. But in order to do this, you do need to know that IBP, so we're going to set u is equal to our algebra, or x, du is equal to dx, v is equal to e to the negative x, and the antiderivative, oh, and the um, antiderivative is equal to the negative e to the negative x. So now again, we multiply across and take the integration of negative. That's x e to the negative x minus our integration, two negatives make a positive, e to the negative x. And the integration of this, the antiderivative, again, we saw this right here, would be the negative. So by integrating, we get this as our final answer. Woo. Again, if you have any questions or if you want me to do more examples, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!